This week, we are adding one of my favorite new Planeswalkers to the collection binder. Let's see which it is. Welcome back, everybody, to week number eight of our collection binder series. Now, for those of you who do not know, we started this series with the intent of completing a binder filled up with awesome and unique cards that we get to talk about page by page every single week. Now, at the end of each video, we actually total up the sum of the binder. We show a completion aspect to see how far along we've actually gotten into our binder. And we're making some headway, guys. We have got some amazing cards to add to the collection this week. Before we jump in, however, I do want to take just a quick moment to highlight one of the comments on last week's videos. Randall commented last week saying he really loves the series, but he's been procrastinating a little bit on starting his own binder solely because he's having trouble figuring out the parameters that he would like to collect around. So here is my task for all of you. I would love you to leave a comment down below. Let Randall know what kind of parameters he should collect around. Maybe he'll take one suggestion and start on his binder. I do want to encourage if you have any new pickups this week, guys, leave them in the comment section below. Maybe we can highlight your comment next week. Now, without further ado, guys, we have got 12 amazing new cards to add to the binder. Let's jump in. All right, guys, you know how we're doing this. We are going through color by color and taking a peek at 12 awesome new cards. Now, our first one here is a really interesting one. It's a Johnny Goldmane, but it's the Pro Tour series promo, uh, which I'll be honest, I didn't even know existed. <laughs> um, this is not my favorite Planeswalker. We'll talk more about that later. But uh, a Johnny really is a cool one. And a Johnny Goldmane in particular has always been uh, just a bit of a favorite of mine. Uh, having alternate artworks like this, I've talked about it before. It's really a big highlight of my collection. It's something that I love to do. I have an entire binder, for a binder, dedicated to alternate art promos. Uh, and I do love generally trying to pick up playsets. This one, I've only got the one, but it is about a $10 card. It's a nice little piece of value, but it's also just a beautiful piece of artwork. Great to have in the binder. And I love adding Planeswalkers too. We haven't really gotten to highlight a lot of those. We will over the next coming weeks, but this is really the start of that. Next up, we are going to be skipping over blue and going straight to black, and we actually have Parage of Urborg as our first black card here. This is a legend from all the way back in Mirage, a time period that I did not actually play that much of. Uh, I believe it was 1999, if I'm not mistaken, um, but an act, uh, just a beautiful piece of artwork. This is one of those where I, I saw the card. I love the fact that it's an old piece of magic history because it is from the Mirage set. That's much older than we've seen in uh, recent years. And so it's actually just a really cool history piece, but that artwork, my goodness, the monochromatic red really sets it apart. That beautiful symmetric almost uh, pose is really, not symmetric, but just really centers the, uh, the character in the artwork. And I absolutely love that. This isn't one that I plan on using for anything. It's just a really cool looking card. Uh, it doesn't hold a ton of value. I think it's maybe two bucks or something like that, but it's just a really cool piece of history and very unique. I didn't know it existed. I saw it in the uh, Scryfall randomizer and I was like, ooh, I gotta have that. So I'm really happy to have this in the binder. Just a really pretty card. Next up, we're gonna stay in black for a few cards, and uh, we actually have one of my favorites, which is Bloodgast. Now, this is just the regular Zendikar, I believe it's Zendikar uh, Bloodgast. There's nothing crazy special about this, but I love Dredge, uh, and I love just graveyard synergies in general. And so Bloodgast and, and is uh, really one of my favorite cards. I absolutely love this thing. The fact that you can landfall this back, so when a land enters the battlefield, you can play it uh, or put it back onto the, the battlefield from the graveyard just is insane to me. Uh, it's not a crazy powerful card in general, but we do see this played in a lot of graveyard strategies because it's so easy to recur. Uh, if you fill up your graveyard really quickly and you play a land, you get a bunch of blood gas back. I mean, that's pretty awesome. So uh, it's a very, very um, synergistic card with those kinds of strategies. But more more in particular, look look at this artwork, guys. I mean, how freaking cool is that? This is by Darken. Absolutely beautiful artwork on this. Those red hands are just uh, creepy, almost. I mean, truly creepy. Absolutely love the artwork on this. This actually does hold some amount of value as well because it is playable. Uh, I'm sure, I mean, it's been reprinted, I believe, a couple times, maybe. Um, but this is the original printing, and that's why I wanted to pick this one up. Just a really cool kind of modern staple for those cards, or for those decks, I should say. 
Next up, we have one of the most iconic black cards in Magic's history, and that is the original Necropotence from Ice Age. This card is stunning. This actually does hold quite a bit of value, although it has been reprinted. It's never been reprinted like this. This is so unique, so special. This was a card that nobody thought was good for such a long time until it was played at a pro level event and then all of a sudden it became one of the staples of the deck and a staple in the format or in uh, eternal formats i should say since then we've seen a lot of storm decks utilize this in things like legacy and vintage uh and for good reason you essentially just get to draw as many cards as you want uh which is kind of broken as it turns out uh there's a massive text box on this i'm not going to read the whole thing but truthfully this is one of the coolest cards i think i have ever seen uh i know in one of the unsets it's actually been made fun of uh they they re or they printed a card that was solely to make fun of this uh but in in truth this is just a card i've always wanted to own it came up randomly and i was like oh i gotta pick this one up guys this is so so special to me uh now i know a lot of people probably don't like necropotence and that's perfectly fine it's a confusing card it's a difficult card and it's a very powerful card uh but it, it's it's very special to me i had to have it i do plan on using this in maybe a cube one day uh, along with things like Yawgmoth's Bargain, because it's very similar in that regard. Uh, but just a really iconic magic card, and again, something really special for us to have. All right, guys, finally, we are coming up on our last black card, and this actually is my favorite new Planeswalker recently. It is Soren the Mirthless. This is insane to me. I love this card. It's super iconic for black, in my opinion, because it kind of does everything that you want black to do. It helps you draw cards. It creates tokens that fly and have lifelink, and then it just deals a crap ton of damage and gains you a lot of life in one, one, one shot there. So it's just a really powerful Planeswalker. We do see this in standard quite a bit. Bit, actually uh don't know about other formats too much at least not yet but uh, a four mana four loyalty planeswalker is not unheard of in certain other formats and so i'm actually kind of excited to see where this lands it may just be standard and that's it but i do think this has legs in other formats uh purely because it's just a super powerful planeswalker in my opinion uh i know loth right now in standard probably takes the cake as probably the best black planeswalker but being at five mana it's a little bit out of range for a lot of eternal formats and so soren in my opinion has some options there uh whereas loth probably does not uh this is not necessarily the most powerful card in the world it's just a really cool and very very on theme for the black color combination or color pie i should say uh i also did go for the borderless full art because i mean i'm a sucker for a good alternate art uh and honestly it's a really cool piece of artwork there's a lot of depth to it a lot of background stuff that's going on that i really like so this was a special one for me i've really fallen in love with soren as a planeswalker right now uh in general i've kind of not liked soren planeswalker cards but this one really took the cake for me so again a really nice pickup and cool to see a newer card we don't get to see a lot of newer cards most of the time I collect old stuff. I don't know what to say. It's just really cool to see new cards there. All right, moving on to red, guys. We've only got a couple cards here, uh, both of which are goblins, fun fact. But the first is Siege Gang Commander. Gang Commander. Now, this one is for uh, or from Scourge. This is the original printing of Siege Gang Commander. We have had it printed since then in things like Dominaria and Eternal Masters. And for good reason. It's a very powerful card for five mana. You do only get a 2-2, but it comes into play with three 1-1 one -one goblin creature tokens. And then for two mana, you can sack a goblin and deal two damage to basically any creature or player on the field so you kind of have shock on a stick uh and just four creatures for the price of one <laughs> uh which is pretty good uh and so while this isn't necessarily a crazy powerful card it's not even a crazy valuable card i think it's like two or three bucks uh it's still a really cool card and it's a nice piece of magic history uh, importantly, it goes very well in cube though, which I've talked about cube drafting before. I'd love to do more videos on cube drafting or building a cube or something like that. So if you're interested, let me know. Uh, but this is the version I wanted in my cube. I've always had a Dominaria version, but never the original. Uh, and so for me, this is actually just a, a pickup on my wish list that I finally got to get. And I'm really happy with that. Now, our other goblin is one that is probably a little more iconic. And if you've played any amount of modern in particular, you've probably seen this. It is goblin guide but not just any goblin guide this is the love your lgs 2021 version and i had no clue this version existed this is my favorite artwork for the card there are multiple 
Uh, but importantly, this has the old school frame and it's in foil. So it's got the beautiful shooting star. Look at that lantern glow. Just a stunning card and not expensive like at all. This is like maybe two bucks. It's crazy to me how much this actually is. It's, it's I think the cheapest version. If I'm looking through right now, I believe it's the cheapest version of this card but in my opinion it's the prettiest like this is one of those where i would totally buy as many of these as i could get my hands on because i just think it's a stunning card this is an iconic card for mono red lists uh any kind of aggro red list is really gonna love this it can come down turn one get in for the attacks it does have a downside of potentially putting a land into the to the opponent's hand uh but in general it's it really outweighs that with the power it can get on the field uh, as well as the damage it can deal just really, really quickly. So this was an easy pickup for me. I surprisingly didn't pick up four, although I think I might go back and buy some more. <laughs> Finally, moving on to some green cards. We've got two of these as well. Uh, one is significantly more valuable than the other, but the first one is Azusa Lost But Seeking. Now, this is not a, a cheap card. This is a really interesting one. Uh, Champions of Kamigawa was the original printing of this card, and we finally picked one up. Now, we've had printings of Azusa since then, in particular a core set uh, which really cheapened up the price but this ability is very very unique and very powerful uh, allowing you to play two additional lands on each of your turns is hugely beneficial for when you're playing playing big green stuff it just seems really good and so uh, for me this is one of those where I actually had the uh, newer printing uh, with the updated artwork but I never had the original Azusa uh, and so for uh, again this is kind of a cube pickup one that I definitely would play in cube uh, and that beautiful, beautiful uh, Todd uh, Lockwood, I believe, Lockwood, I don't know, uh, is it, the artwork's amazing. I absolutely love this card. So this was just definitely a, a pickup that I knew was on my wish list uh, and finally got to pick her up. Just stunning, stunning card. All right, our last green card is actually our only reserve list card. However, it's a pretty valuable one. It's about a $70 card, and it is Master of the Hunt. Like I said, this is reserve list. They are not going to be reprinting this unless they abolish the reserve list, which is a whole other thing. Uh, but it's a really unique card, and we've actually had a callback to it uh, in not recent years, but at one point we have Master of the Wild Hunt, I believe. Uh, which was a really cool little callback to this card, but an actual really good one. Uh, it's a 2-2 for 4. I know it doesn't seem amazing, but you can pay for and put uh, a little wolf into play that has banding with other wolves. It's a really interesting card. Uh, I do really like this. I, I've said before, anytime a reserve list card kind of comes up on that randomizer, I generally will pick it up. Uh, occasionally cards are either too expensive or really not good enough that I just feel like ah, I could pass over. This really hit the sweet spot for me. It is a little expensive and it definitely adds a lot of value to the binder, but imp importantly it is reserveless. So it's going to be a card that if they do have to reprint, it's going to be out of necessity when they get rid of the reserve list if they ever do. Uh, and so this is a fairly safe investment. I am not a finance guy. Uh, but I do try and keep an aspect of that in my uh, my decision making. And so this is certainly a card that I'm very happy to pick up. Just a beautiful card as well. That old school Legends artwork. Absolutely stunning. We have only one artifact today, guys. And I'm very excited for this one. Uh, it's actually a little, little signal pest. Look at this guy. It's the promo version. It's a 0-1 for 1 with Battle Cry. And it can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. Just a really unique card. Uh, this works really well. Uh, in Infect decks. I actually really like this in Infect decks. Um, the, the artwork is actually why I picked this up though. I've said before and I said at the beginning of this one uh, with the Ajani that any kind of promo is really special in my opinion just because it's not a card that everybody's going to be able to pick up. Uh, and so anytime they do come up I try and pick them up. This isn't a super pricey card by any means. Uh, but it is unique and it is really really pretty and that's just the only reason I picked it up It's nothing too crazy. It's nothing too special. It's just unique uh, And sometimes that's enough I will say if you do go to start your binder Randall if you're making a decision on the parameters of your binder It can just be cards that you think are cool and that's all you have to do. It doesn't have to be anything too crazy. Um, honestly, you know, we see a lot of really good high value cards on this series but a lot of them are cards like this that are just different and I think that's enough sometimes. And so uh, for me, this is just a really special card because of that. 
Uh, not adding a ton of value by any means, but just really, really pretty. Finally, guys, we are coming to the land section. Our last two cards, nothing too crazy this time around. I know the last two have been pretty awesome, but Copper Line Gorge is our first one. Uh, this is from the Scars of Mirrodin cycle, the fast lands, if you will, that come into play if you've got two or fewer other lands on the battlefield. Beautiful, beautiful artwork in all of these. Uh, Dark Slick Shores, um, the uh i can't think of the other ones anyway they're all really pretty uh copper line gorge might be the most pretty in my opinion it's really really stunning artwork uh all of these are actually pretty relevant as well um i think this is probably one of the better ones uh dark slick shores and black cleave cliffs i think are the other two like really good ones um which are blue black and black red respectively uh but uh, this holds a value of around seven-ish dollars uh, for the Scars of Mirrodin version. There has been a reprint as an expedition, which I did not pick up, uh, but this is really just a cool land to have. I've actually never had a Copper Line Gorge. I've got a couple of the other ones, but I didn't have this one. Uh, and so again, for cube or for any kind of scenario where I'd like to use fast dual lands, this is certainly a playable card. Things like modern love things like this as well. So I'm actually really happy to pick these up. I'd like to get a full playset, but this is my first. We'll hopefully get some more uh, as the series continues, but we won't see them on the series. Again, we can't do any duplicates, uh, but this really is just a pretty card. And last but not least, guys, we have got uh, Stirring Wildwood. Now, in general, this is not a super crazy card. Uh, man land, as far as man lands go, this is actually one of the weaker options. It's not bad, but it's certainly not the best. Uh, importantly, though, this is the box topper from Ultimate Masters. So you get the beautiful extended artwork. You've got the faded frame on top and bottom. Uh, just a really unique uh, uh, card type. Uh, and so I was actually really stoked to pick this up. This isn't one that I was like really, really hunting for. I've actually got a couple of Stirring Wildwoods already. And so I wasn't really worried about this card at all. It wasn't even on the radar. Uh, but when it came up, I was like, you know, that's a unique piece. We haven't seen an ultimate box topper uh, at all, I believe on the series. And so this was kind of cool to be able to showcase how they've done some of those really special showcasey kind of things uh, and how it kind of all started because nowadays especially uh, we actually see a lot of like showcase versions of cars now every standard card released has like four or five different versions uh, which is kind of insane i actually really liked though the way they did it in ultimate masters which is a select few cards were selected as a box topper and you got those one per box uh, and it was just something special. It felt a little more special than it does now. Um, whereas now I think there's just like, again, way too many versions of every single card. Um, now this wasn't the original version of that. Obviously, I think Kaladesh probably was a really big component for, or a proponent for pushing that. Um, but Ultimate Masters really took it to a new level with some really amazing cards, including Liliana of the Veil, which is, I think, the best one and the one that I pulled in my first box, so I'm really stoked about that. But uh, this was just a really cool one. I thought really unique to see a box topper out of this uh, because there are only so many of them. It's really nice to pick these up. So I love this. Beautiful card. Nothing too crazy, but uh, that wraps up today's page. All right, guys, that is 12 new cards added to the binder. The value will show up here on screen for you guys so you can track how many uh, how many new cards we've added, of course, or the percentage of the binder, but also the value that we have added to the plate this time around. Again, guys, I want you to leave comments down below. Let me know what cards you're picking up. Leave Randall a suggestion for his uh, parameters for his binder. And I can't thank you all enough for watching. You, you've really come through on this series. You guys have been commenting like crazy saying how much you love the series, how special it is to do this. I can't thank you enough, and I want to highlight that more. We're going to start highlighting you guys as much as we can in these, so make sure to leave those comments down below. I want to continue to do that. Thank you again, guys, for watching this episode of the Collection Binder Update. Leave those comments down below. Happy collecting to you all, and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you guys again.